Jesus told me to make a video like this at least once a week. Apparently it's because the Jesuits are so busy that I need to educate the world about what they're doing because if not, um, their lies will prosper. Uh, I'm going to start refuting some of those lies right now. Uh, I've noticed when I go online, the, the Jesuits at their Order of the Jesuits YouTube channel are some people are making comments, speaking very authoritatively, claiming that I have such a mental illness that therefore my mother has to support me financially. Um, as far as my finances go, I would like to say this. My mother is most definitely not giving me financial support. It is not her money that is keeping me afloat. It's money from Jesus. And he's not using my mother as the instrument. And that's all I'm going to say on the matter right now. But I would like to state emphatically, most emphatically, that my mother is not being used to give me financial support right now. Um, if I had to rely on the money that came from my mother, I'd have to be living with her because she uh, she's not. You say, well, where are you getting your money? Um, I don't really care to discuss that right now. Okay. Um, but I will just say that Jesus is taking care of me and he's not using my mother. Okay. And that's all I'm going to say about that right now. Um, I've noticed some other interesting things as I'm going online. Um, the Jesuits have wasted no time to start their damage control over the movie that I just made about Brent Spiner's rape, which is now finished. And it's up at my website at gabrielchana.com slash church.html. That's G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E-C-H-A-N-A dot com slash church, C-H-U-R-C-H dot H-T-M-L. It's called Brent Spiner's Rape. I've rated a PG-13. I was able to tone it down from an R rating because we were dealing with really nasty subject matter. When you're talking about how Jesuits rape, it's very hard to keep it clean because Jesuits are dirty. But I've managed to make the movie uplifting using scripture and music so that I've been able to tone the rating down from R to PG-13. I'm really happy about that. And I think the Lord's going to be able to use that movie to reach a lot of people and bring them into his kingdom. I'm, I think Jesus is really pleased with me right now. Um, the Brent Spiner clone appears to have been very busy lately. Um, I've noticed some interesting things. Brent hasn't been writing me recently, and I think that's because there's a trial going on between him and his clone, and he doesn't want to talk to me about it right now. But I have noticed some things going online. The Jesuits are doing damage control because of my movie about Brent Spiner's rape, trying to make it appear like I have a great fantasy life and that the stuff in there just couldn't be true because it contradicts what the real Brent Spiner is saying in his interviews and stuff. Um, let's make sure that that is the real Brent Spiner. I um, saw a YouTube video entitled Chief Bigfoot Talks Food with LeVar Burton and Brent Spiner. And when I watched it, I thought, oh, yeah, that's the real Brent Spiner. And it really did seem like the Brent I know because I've been dealing with him for 22 years or so. So I know him pretty well. I really, this is what I think happened in that video. The video ended with Brent saying, making a comment about his mother-in-law. I have Brent doesn't talk about his mother-in-law in public. <laughs> you say, the Jesuits are trying to insinuate that his mother-in-law would be Lori McBride's mother. Uh, Brent never talks about his mother-in-law in public. This is really strange behavior coming from Brent Spiner. Let me tell you what I think is happening in this video. I went back and studied the video, and it seemed like they had the real Brent Spiner up until the very end of the video. And then I think at the very end, they spliced in the clone. And they did such a, almost a seamless splice job so you can't tell it's the clone. So I think they used the real Brent Spiner throughout maybe 95% up to until you get to the very end. And then they spliced in the clone and had the clone make the comment about his mother-in-law to create the impression that Brent Spiner's married to Lori McBride. That's what I think happened. And if you look at that video real carefully, you'll see that the spirit coming out of the eyes of the man at the very end is different than the spirit coming out of the eyes of the man through most of the, of the Brent Spiner through most of the video. The Brent Spiner clone is a shallow person. And Brent Spiner's not shallow, but his clone is. And when you look at the expression coming out of the eyes of the clone, you see 
a person who lacks depth and or any spirituality about him. You may say, well, I don't believe Brent's spiritual. He says, he, I've heard that he's an atheist. Uh, actually, Brent told me he's an agnostic, or he was. He was an agnostic up until September 2011, and then I led him to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so he's now a born-again Christian. But he's not exactly your run-of-the-mill, everyday born-again Christian, so a lot of people don't believe he's a born-again Christian. I'm going to get into, I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyways, um, you have to understand, the Jesuits are, are really on a, they're, they've got a, they've got a cover for themselves, because I'm exposing them. They have to make me appear to be crazy or unreliable, and they're being really clever in the way they're going about this. And they picked a video with LeVar Burton and Brent Spiner together because in my movie I show that LeVar Burton actually rescued Brent Spiner from Lori McBride. So now they're trying to make it appear like, you know, that all this stuff I'm saying is not true. Um, I really believe that Brent did go to Vancouver where he, where his clone also made some, I'm not sure how the Jesuits pulled this off, but I do believe that the real Brent Spiner did go to Vancouver, Canada. But I do not believe that he made a statement that he's never met me or known me. What I think the Jesuits did is they're put, they're doing good theater here. They they're probably giving the clone acting lessons so that he can act like the real Brent Spiner. And I got to say he's putting on a pretty credible performance. But and being an actor myself now because I've been studying acting, when you look into his eyes, he doesn't quite get the part. What I mean is. He needs to go back to acting school because when you look at his eyes, you don't see a, the real Brent Spiner. You see a shallow man who is not Brent Spiner. But he's got an advantage in playing Brent Spiner in that he's got Brent Spiner's genes because he's the clone. But I'm telling you because I've studied acting now. I just started studying acting. I'm new at it. But if you look at my movie, I think I'm pretty respectable for a new, for a green actor. If you look at the, the clones, performance at that YouTube video where that's entitled Brent Spiner speaks about Gail Cord, you know, Schuler. Um, if you look in his eyes, you can see there is a lack of depth there. Brent is very committed to me. And um, the clone is shallow, Brent is not. Like I said, most of you out there are not actors and actresses, so you may not pick up on this. But because I'm taking acting lessons now, I'm, I'm noticing the clones. Whenever Brent Spiner makes a statement that creates the impression that I am not in his life, look in the, his eyes really, really good. Look at the eyes and at the spirit coming out of the eyes and see if it's consistent with the spirit coming out of Brent's eyes when you look at the real Brent Spiner. There is a, let me see, I'm kind of like an acting now, so let me see if I can put, up, put the expression. This is like the expression you'd see from the real Brent Spiner. Here's the expression of the clone. I'm getting into character here. There's the expression of the clone. Here's the expression of the real Brent Spiner. You say, I can't see the difference. I said, how do you do it so quick? I've been studying acting, folks. Let me do this one more time. Here's the expression of the clone. Here's the expression of the real Brent Spiner. I caught it. See, how can you do that? I, like I said, I've been studying acting. Now, now when you go look <laughs> at the video, Look in the eyes. Whenever that Brent Spiner makes a statement that seems like it's betraying me, it's probably not the real Brent Spiner. It's his clone. <laughs> he said, well, I can't see it. Well, you maybe you're not smart enough to see it or you haven't taken acting lessons, but I just showed it to you because I know how the clone thinks. That's how I'm able to get into character so quick and show you his expression. And I know how the real Brent Spiner thinks. Look in the eyes. Okay, Brent really did go to Vancouver, and I, I've seen a lot of, I saw a, a series of videos posted where there was a four video series, and they, they, they put in the, 
a, a post the video of the clone in the middle of videos about the real Brent Spiner to make it appear like they're all the same person. Ooh, these Jesuits are getting so clever. But then this is nothing new. I mean, they know how to cover their butts. Let me tell you some how clever these, these Jesuits are. Did you know that the Titanic was sunk by the Jesuits? Yeah, the Titanic. I really believe that. You say, why would the Jesuits sink the Titanic? Because they wanted to establish the Federal Reserve Bank in the United States. At that time, the money in the United States was under the control of the U.S. Treasury. The Jesuits wanted to establish the Federal Reserve Bank. This was during the time of Woodrow Wilson. So in order to do this, they had to get rid of some millionaires who, and billionaires who would oppose them. How would they do this? Make them die on the Titanic. So when all of their all of these millionaires and billionaires who would have been against what they wanted to do, which was the establishment of the Federal Reserve Bank, they uh, had them all board the Titanic. But guess what? Just in case people caught on to the fact that the Roman Catholic Church's agents or these Jesuits had sunk the Titanic for the sole purpose of establishing the Federal Reserve Bank, they put they they cram the Titanic with Roman Catholics. That way, if anybody accused them of sinking the Titanic, they'd say, but we wouldn't do that. Our own people were on there. Let me tell you something. The Jesuits will stop at nothing when they want to accomplish something, even killing their own people. And that's exactly what they did. Turn that off. <laughs> so um, that's exactly what they did. And um, they're just, they're like that. They know how to cover their butts, okay? Um, there's, I have a whole video series about how the Federal Reserve Bank and the Jesuits, and I'm going to read you something from Smoke Screens, give you an idea how filthy rich they are. Uh, this is page 72 of Smoke Screens by Jack Chick. The Vatican's treasure of solid gold, this was written in the 1980s, it's outdated, they probably have more money than this right now. The Vatican's treasure of solid gold has been estimated by the United Nations World Magazine to amount to several billion dollars. It's probably trillion dollars right now. A large bulk of this is stored in gold ingots with the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank. I just told you about the Federal Reserve Bank. While banks in England and Switzerland hold the rest. But this is just a small portion of the wealth of the Vatican, which in the U.S. alone is greater than that of the five wealthiest giant corporations of the country. When to that is added all the real estate, property, stocks, and shares abroad, then the staggering accumulation of the wealth of the Catholic Church becomes so formidable as to defy any rational assessment. The Catholic Church is the biggest financial power, wealth accumulator, and property owner in existence. She is a greater possessor of material riches than any other single institution, corporation, bank, giant trust, government, or state of the whole globe. The Pope, as the visible re ruler of this immense amassment of wealth, is consequently the richest individual of the 20th century or the 21st century. No one can realistically assess how much he is worth in terms of billions, or should I say trillions, of dollars. Like I said, this is outdated. You may say, but the whole world is suffering under a recession. Yeah, guess who engineered it? <laughs> guess who engineered it? The Jesuits. They've got so much money, they can create a recession or an economic depression. So you say, what are you bringing this all up for? Well, we're dealing with a filthy rich organization. So I'm, it's, I'm saying that since Lori McBride admits herself that she's a top Jesuit agent, um... It makes sense that uh, we're having a hard time getting rid of her. It makes sense that this organization might have the, t the um, because they, they're so filthy rich, they're going to be up on the latest in technology. So it makes sense that they know mind reading technology, cloning, and all this other stuff. But because they've kept it under wraps, because they don't want you to know what they're doing with all this technology, and because it hasn't been made public and hasn't made it into mainstream news, though you can get it at Gabriel Chana Fox News Channel, um, that's how they're able to convince some people that I'm crazy. But Jesus tells me, he said, Gail, the Jesuits want you to think that everybody thinks you're crazy, but Gail, most people do not think you're crazy. And Jesus said, I want you to continue to make videos. He said, you have a, a gift for public speaking, and he wants me to continue. Anyways, I wanted to mention how rich they are to let you know why we're having such a hard time 
exposing their lies. Besides this, you know, during World War II, when they did, when they killed the Serbians and put them all in concentration camps because they belonged to the Greek Orthodox Church and they weren't Roman Catholics and they didn't want to convert to Roman Catholicism, so they tortured all these people. Somebody tried to warn Mrs. Roosevelt about it, and guess what? Their lies were so brilliant. But by the time she realized that that it was true that all these Serbians had been massacred in Yugoslavia, it was too late. They were already dead. Somebody tried to warn her that these slaughters were taking place. But she didn't believe them because the Jesuits did such a good cover-up that they covered it up and they they fooled Mrs. Roosevelt. They, did you know the evidence for them being behind the Nazi Holocaust is overwhelming? I mean, photographs, uh, sworn testimonies, overwhelming. Leaders within the G German government could attest to it. Adolf Hitler was a son of the Catholic Church. Um, like I said, we've got pictures here from smoke screens, which they don't want you to see. Um, these were all devout Roman Catholics. Hado, Hitler, Mussolini, Franco, all of these. And then you can see this picture here of a Catholic leader shaking the hand of Adolf Hitler. Okay, folks. Now look, now look at this picture. Do you see this on Fox News or uh, CNN or... Uh, any of the mainstream news media, like you might see it on the Gabriel Tana Fox News Channel, but you don't see it on the ones that are, you know, been established for years and years and years. These Jesuits are masters of propaganda. They know how to cover their butts, okay? That's my point. The, the evidence against what they did in World War II is overwhelming, and yet today, how many people know this about them? My point is this, folks. That movie that I'm st that movie that I made about Brent Spiner's rape is true, but we are dealing with the richest organization on earth. They've got they've got excellent film editing technology. They have cloning technology, and they're using everything in their arsenal right now to cover their butts and make me appear crazy and unreliable. And you know what? They're going to convince some of you because some of you out there are kind of dumb. You don't even realize what they did in World War II. You're pretty stupid. You know that. <laughs> so. So if you're stupid enough not to realize what they did in World War II, then you're not going to believe me when I tell you about all this stuff about what they've been doing recently, which is even more wild because they've got more advanced technology now than they had in World War II. Okay, let just the main point is this, okay? There are a lot of inconsistencies in their presentation. And those of you out there that have half a brain, that should tell you something. Inconsistencies generally indicate lying to most people who have normal who have any logic at all, okay? Let me give you some inconsistencies. All right, um... I'm gonna make sure I'm not forgetting something, kind of jumping around. Lori McBride freely admits she's a Jesuit. And I've actually heard her voice on my telephone. She's called me up, and let me tell you, she is one nasty woman. She, uh, called me up when she had Brent Spiner in, uh, in, she was, she got inside his home and she managed to tie him up down. And I'm going to, in the next movie that I make, I'll be going into this. She managed to tie him up in his basement and um, she was torturing him down there. And the reason she did this is because at that time my son was in the hospital and she wanted him not to be available for me when I was dealing with my son in the hospital for pneumonia and asthma. And during that time, um, while she was torturing him, uh, he finally got out. Uh, he wouldn't give in to her. She was starving him and everything, and he wouldn't eat. He would, he would not give in to her demands. She was trying to get him to betray me really big. He finally got out, and he called me on the phone, and he made love to me. Well, about 12 hours later, I got a call from a woman around midnight. And I'm an actress now, so I can just kind of let you know exactly what she said. Hey, bitch, what the fuck are you doing with my boyfriend? That was Lori McBride. July 1993. You say, what'd she say that for? Because he called me and made love to me on the phone. She, she couldn't get willing sex from him. She could only, get, she could only rape him. He would never give, him, give her sex willingly and, and knowingly. So she was getting frustrated because she couldn't stop him from loving me. 
you know, Lori McBride has has had a successful propaganda campaign where she doctors up all her photos to make her look really sweet. Brent says that every photo out there where she looks nice has been doctored up. He said the only pictures of her that are accurate are the ones where she looks like a bitch because he said she is a bitch. So, you know, she um, she was frustrated. So she called me up and um, Brent um, told me that. Um, well, anyways, during the Quebec trial, I asked Lori, was that you who called me on the phone and said, hey, bitch, what the F are you doing with my boyfriend? And she said, yep, that was me. And I said, yeah, I said, that's, you know. She said, well, you were interfering with my relationship with Brent, so I called you up. It's, and yet, and yet at other times, she will say, um, she will say that she, uh, you know, that, that Brent didn't even know of my existence during that time, so she's contradictory. So she, uh, she changes her story when she realizes to cover up, she's got to change it and make it a little different in order for Jesuits to change the story. Um, anyways, now she's acknowledging that I was, now they're trying to come, make me come across as a 20, as a person who's got a very deeply ingrained mental illness to the point where it went so far back that, that I've had it for 22 years. Oh God, I'm telling you, this, this, these lies are getting wilder by the, by the minute. Okay, she admits, here's an inconsistency. She admits she's a Jesuit. And I have sent Brent Spiner the evidence from this book and others that the Roman Catholic Church was behind the Nazi Holocaust. And he's Jewish. As we all know, millions of Jews died during the, the Nazi Holocaust. Lori McBride freely admits she's an anti-Semitic Jesuit. Okay, Brent is Jewish. Does he hate his own race so much that he would marry an anti-Semitic Jesuit who wants to set up another uh, Holocaust? That, you better believe it, folks. When and if the Jesuits take over the United States, it's going to be anti-Jewish again. And the Jews will go into the camps or they will be tortured. In fact, I per personal opinion, I um, I think that the concentration camps are going to happen after the rapture, which means the anti-Semitic activities are going to take place during the biblical tribulation period, which as we know from Bible prophecy is exactly what the beast is going to be like. The beast is going to be Zach Knight. He's the Jesuit leader right now, the true Jesuit leader. And he... Um, He's the Antichrist. And when he comes to power, at the beginning of his reign, clever little thing that he is, he's going to befriend the Jewish nation. After about three and a half years, he's going to turn on the Jews and go after them, and he's going to kill them. Okay? He's a true anti-Semite in his heart. And when you look at the order of the Jesuits.com and look at their opening statement, they say they freely admit anyone into their organization except those of Semitic origins. They even admit they're anti-Semitic. Now, they're trying to get away with this by claiming that I have made that website to incriminate them and that they and that's not a true Jesuit website. Yeah, it is a true Jesuit website. Vladimir Putin and his nanotechnology research team discovered it, and it is a Jesuit website. Okay? Don't believe this crap that it's not a Jesuit website. <laughs> They are just so clever. So, I mean, come on. This, why would a Jewish man want to marry somebody who wants to destroy his race? The answer is he doesn't. You know, I am risking my life and my reputation and my employment. I have risked my life, my reputation, and my employment to expose their plans to set up another Holocaust. And I've paid a price for it. I would believe that Brent, being a true Jewish person at heart, would appreciate this, which he does, and that he would never, ever desire an anti-Semitic woman like Lori McBride, who is a devout Roman Catholic. Um, yeah, I mean, devout. You would say, what's wrong with being a devout Roman Catholic? There's nothing wrong with being a devout Roman Catholic as long as you don't believe in their canon law. Because their canon law states that if you don't believe that that wafer or host that they offer for the mass is the actual 
soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ that that and if you only believe it's a sign or a symbol or a figure that you should be accursed you may say you may say that's not a big deal yes it is a big deal because they believe that if you do not believe that that host or wafer in the mass is the actual body and blood of Jesus Christ in other words that you're literally eating Jesus during the mass and if you don't believe that that you should be accursed that means they have the right to do anything they want to you because you're accursed. They can put you in a concentration camp. They can rape you. They can use brain control. And that's just the reason that they're attacking me and Brent Spiner. Because we're accursed. Because we don't think that's the actual. And because we're exposing them too. So that too. Because we're a very public position. So, yeah. Come on, folks. This is logic here. Brent's a Jew. I have, I'm, I have Jewish ancestry. Okay, Brent and I are sticking together for our people. We're trying to prevent another Holocaust. It makes sense that we would love each other, which we do. Not that we don't embrace, we have a lot of Gentiles at our church, and we're not a, like a Jewish-only organization, but we're Jewish. Brent and I are. You say, well, your mother doesn't say you're Jewish. Well, you know, she's a little dumb about that, either that or wicked, I don't know. So, <laughs> because I didn't know it either, but my grandfather was Jewish on my father's side. He was the genetic brother of Howard Hughes, even though um, we uh, can't. I'm not going to go in deep into that right now. But the Jesuits are trying to say I'm crazy on that one, too. But when you look at the picture, if you ever saw a picture of my father or my grandfather and put it next to a picture of Howard Hughes, almost a spitting image. <laughs> There's something to what I'm saying. And I've got like pictures up at my website to show the comparison. Of course, the Jesuits have to discredit all this stuff. You're saying, well, if you're Howard Hughes, you should be a millionaire. Um, yeah, but you know, they, uh, the Jesuits managed to uh, make sure that never happened. You've got to realize we're dealing with a filthy rich organization, and they got a lot of power. They know how to keep their enemies down, or any potential enemies down. See, when I was a little child, I was a potential energy cause, en enemy because of my genetic profile, and they've been keeping me down my whole life. And I never figured out all this stuff about my genetic profile till after Brent Spiner and Vladimir Putin came in my life. And now the Jesuits, you know, got to say I'm crazy. And I'm getting off the subject again. Okay. Anyways, the movie's finished. It's called Brent Spiner's Rape. It's at my website. I'm going to be starting the next one because Jesus loves my movies. I believe that um, Brent is taking his clone to court right now. And that's why I'm not hearing him. Um, he's been really quiet. But... I wanted to point out that the Jesuits are doing a cover-up right now, a very clever cover-up, where they're taking actual footage of the real Brent Spiner and mixing it in with a clone to make it appear like, you know, to discredit me. And so I'm making this video to warn you that this is happening, okay? Like I said, the overwhelming, there's evidence overwhelming that they were, in this book and elsewhere, that they were behind the Nazi Holocaust, and they covered their butts on that one. I mean, folks, these people are good at propaganda, okay? Uh, if they were able to cover their butts after killing a million Jews in concentration camps, it shouldn't be too difficult for them to cover their butts over what I'm doing, you know, with my movie and stuff. And they're, and they're pretty effective, and as some of you are going to believe their lies. That's because you're a little dumb. <laughs> All right, so those of you who believe them, I'm going to read you Daniel 8.12. None of this surprises Jesus Christ. Daniel 8.12. This is talking about the Antichrist, who's Zach Knight. And in host, that's the bread or wafer in the mass, was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. That means he got it by being evil. And it, and it cast down the truth to the ground. Whoever this guy is, he's going to be a master liar because he cast truth down to the ground. And it practiced and prospered. That means this guy's going to be such a good liar. It's going to, the lies will, he's going to practice these lies with brilliance. He's already getting started with me. Some of you are already fooled, man. You think I'm a paranoid schizophrenic and you think that I'm a little Lulu and you don't want to listen to me. Oh boy, those Jesuits are good, man. They got you suckers good. Some of you out there believe all their lies and it practiced and prospered. The King James Bible is true. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. The Bible says he's going to fool most of you guys. 
The Bible says that even the very elect will be deceived. The Lord Jesus is using me to try to open up the eyes of those of you out there who love the truth. And if you love the truth, Jesus will help, will give you a, he'll open your eyes and help you to know the truth. But those of you who love lies and deception, Jesus might just let you keep on being deceived because that's what you like. <laughs>